Hello! Thank you for joining me on the sequel as we dive deeper into the objective understanding of elastic recoil. Elastic recoil is a method of harnessing the elastic properties on the tendon and fascia of a muscle. Research has been done in regards to the impact the elastic properties of the tendon and fascia have on the overall deliverance of force, and I'll leave a few sources down below referencing this. The entire premise of using elastic recoil is not taught too often in the fundamentals of boxing and for good reason, as cleaner and shorter movements that rely more so on hip and pivot will traditionally be you to the punch, thus use your own force against you. But that doesn't mean professional boxers don't use it. Actually, one of the greatest boxers of all time, who, by many veterans of the discipline, regard him as the greatest boxer of all time, used this method, elastic recoil, as an integral philosophy to his striking style. Sugar Ray Robinson. You can see the way he whipped his arms back against their elasticity. His core boxing is very unconventional. His understanding of the science and philosophy was definitely at one of the highest levels, but his punching techniques and execution were very unorthodox. He definitely used elastic recoil, as you can visibly see. Mike Tyson he would visibly whip devastating speed into his hooks and uppercuts with elastic recoil, transitioning from body to head until you were dead. Basically, the man was a terrifying monster indeed. Of course, we covered Gennady Golovkin in our last video, but I'd like to dive a little deeper. His method is pressuring you into an infight, then with head movement and a huge range of motion, harnessing elastic recoil to devastate through the velocity and explosiveness of his hooks clearly using elastic recoil. All of these strikes rely heavily on the elastic properties of the pectoral or chest, but let's look at an example of it being generated elsewhere. The bolo punch invented by Seferino Garcia, who developed the wide sweeping motion in his youth, hacking at vegetation with a machete, hence bolo, Filipino machete. It's been used by Roy Jones, Sugar Ray, Leonard, and was used by Conor McGregor to effectively deal with Marcus Brimage's very low forward stance. The premise of this punch is to increase distance over time to increase velocity, but also to use the elastic properties of the bicep as it snaps from the sweep around. Definitely a very telegraph strike, but its power increase is unquestioned. Overall, this method of generating power should not deter you from understanding the crisp fundamentals of boxing. They exist for a reason, and that reason is they're very effective. But it's important nonetheless to note how many great warriors utilize this unorthodox philosophy to devastate their weight at the top. This leads us to a powerful conclusion. To know what works for us, but also to figure out what works for you. Because magic doesn't happen always copying the textbook. It happens when we take its wisdom and knowledge and create an exception that adds to it. You exist not to read and regurgitate, but to read and expand, to add and evolve. That's what we can learn from these great warriors, warriors who took their own unique path and found a gift that led them to the top of their craft. As a bonus, let's look at Hendo's H-bomb. <laughs> oh baby, why is that so satisfying? Huge range of motion snapping from the recoil into a death blow. Hendo definitely used elastic recoil, especially in this instance for Spizbing. Hope you guys enjoy the video. Please don't forget to like and subscribe if you did. It's Kukarma, and until next time, peace.